Hello and welcome to Second Drafts, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Today on Second Drafts, we're going over how to put images into your ebook, as well as steps to go about before you add them in. If you've been following along, in our last video, we went over why it's important to have an About the Author section in your book. The main reason is to create a personal connection with your audience, something that just is impossible within the story. Another step in creating that personal connection is adding a headshot so the audience can see your face. You might think that you need to get a professional to take your headshot, but the beauty is that you probably have a good enough camera waiting right in your pocket. That's right, your smartphone can probably take great pictures right out of the box. And with a few tweaks, it can be perfect to put into the ebook. One thing to keep in mind when adding images is that depending on your royalty rate you choose with Amazon and the larger the deliverable file size of your Kindle file, the more Amazon will charge you for sending that file to customers. It's called a delivery fee and is 15 cents per megabyte of data. Images are probably going to be a huge contributor to that amount as images, especially professionally done ones, can be large in size just because of the quality. In today's video, I'll not only be showing you how to get images into your ebook, but I'll also show you how to resize and compress them so that they look appropriate across multiple devices and won't rack up your delivery costs. The program that we'll be using to do the resizing and compression is called GIMP. GIMP is a free image editor similar to Photoshop, but it's open source meaning that users can contribute to how GIMP functions. It has a lot of features, and being free is also nice. First, download GIMP with the link in the description, and then we'll head over to the computer to show you how to use it. Alright, now that you have GIMP downloaded, let's open up an image to show you how to compress it. I'm going to start with the cover. The easiest way to open a file in GIMP is to right-click on the image, and then select Edit with GIMP. Now, with the cover open in GIMP, we can get started. Amazon recommends that the cover be 2,500 pixels on the longest side. What does that mean? A pixel is a unit of measurement for images. And you can see the size of your image in many different spots in GIMP, like here at the top. As we can see, the image is 2000 by 3020 pixels, which is too long for Kindle. So let's resize it. Click on this button, the Scale tool, in the toolbox you see here. If you don't have a toolbox, just go to Tools, hover over Transform Tools, and select the Scale tool there. If you selected the Scale tool from the toolbox, you'll next need to click on the image to bring up the Scale dialog box. In this next box, it once again will show you the measurement of the image, hopefully in pixels. If it's not in pixels, then click on the drop-down next to the numbers and select Pixels. Now, before we go about changing the size, we want to make sure that it changes both the width and the height at the same time. Otherwise, the image will get distorted and it'll be a pain to fix. To make sure they're adjusted simultaneously, click this little chain button so that they're linked. Now we're good to go and we can change the size of our image. You can do this by either using the arrows next to the numbers like so, or by clicking and holding on one of these boxes on the image itself and dragging it to the size we want. I prefer using the arrows, however, because it's more precise. Once we have the size we want, click Scale, and it will scale the image to the size we selected. Uh-oh, it looks like there's a little bit of leftover from the image. The image itself is smaller, but we need the background to match. GIMP is meant for image manipulation. That's why there's this leftover area in case someone wanted to add something in there. We don't need it though, and luckily it's easy to fix. Go to Image along the top, 
and then click Fit Canvas to Layers. There, all fixed. Now let's get our image exported so that we can add it to our ebook. Go to File up on the top left and select Export As. You might think you should use Save or Save As, but clicking that will only save the work we've done so far to the image, which might not be a bad idea as well, in case you make a lot of changes and want it saved. For our purposes, we'll stick to just exporting the file for use. Once you click Export, it will bring up another window where you can select where you want the file to end up, as well as the name of the file itself. Usually, it will automatically bring you to the location of where the original image you opened is. But if it didn't, just save it to the desktop by clicking it on the left side. You'll want to change the name of the image so it's different from the original, as we don't want to get confused between the two. Make sure to leave the extension, the part at the end, like .jpg or .png alone, as without that, the computer won't know what type of file it is. We want to save it in .jpg format though, as it offers the best size for the best quality, and it works in Kindle. You can select the extension type by clicking the plus on the bottom left here, and then scrolling through the options until you find JPEG image. Once you've gotten that selected, and changed the name of the image, click Export at the bottom, and it will bring up a new window. In this window is where we will compress the image with the quality slider at the top. If you put the slider to 100, that means that there will be little to no compression done, and it will be the largest file size. For now, let's leave it at 100 and see how big the file ends up being. Hmm, as you can see here, it's not much smaller than our source file. For every 1000 kilobytes, it's one megabyte. So our file is over six megabytes, which is far too large for our Kindle file. It doesn't always translate exactly, but if we sent a file of over 6 megabytes, that would be a delivery cost of 90 cents off our royalties, and we definitely don't want that. So let's change the compression. All we have to do is follow the same step as before. Go to File on the top left, select Export As, make sure the file name and extension is good, and select Export to get that window with the quality slider back. When we're selecting how much we compress, the best gauge to see how well we're doing is by the file size and how it looks to the eye. The lower the quality slider, the worse the image will start to look, but we do have lots of leeway. I like to look at the original and the compressed file and see if I can spot a major difference, or if it looks bad comparatively and go by that. I want my file to be as small as possible, but also as good looking as it can be. And you have to strike that balance on your own. I'm going to aim for under 200 kilobytes, and no discernible difference to the naked eye. But if I can't get it that low, it's not a problem if it's a bit bigger. For your end, just play around with the quality slider, and keep exporting it until you get it right. Another thing to mention with the cover is that this is the file that you'll also want to use when uploading to Amazon. Amazon gets you to upload two separate files, the cover and the book file. And it will overwrite the cover we add today with the one you upload to them. If you upload the original file, then Kindle will use that to compile the book together, and it will end up increasing the delivery fee. So make sure you upload the one we just made. Once you have that done, we'll do the same to another image we'll be putting into our ebook, our headshot. As explained in the previous video, having an About the Author section is almost necessary if you want to connect with your audience. And having a picture of yourself there is going to help you make that connection. With images in the ebook itself, you need to strike a different balance, 
one that works across multiple devices. It's not just about the file size and image quality, but also about how the image will look on different Kindles or e-readers. As we discussed earlier, pixels are a unit of measurement, and that measurement carries over to the screen size as well. If you have an image that's 800 pixels wide, but a person is reading your book on a device that's pixels are only 600 wide, what do you think will happen to the picture you put in? It's going to get distorted and look very large on that small screen. Conversely, what about when the screen is 2000 pixels wide? That image may look too small on such a large screen. We can't account for all screen sizes, but we definitely need to be considerate of those people with smaller screens and try to find that balance accordingly. Once as we go over the next step, finalizing the Kindle file, you may want to revisit this step after viewing the Kindle file in Kindle Previewer and adjust the size of your internal images accordingly. You don't have to worry so much about the cover size as that will adjust itself, but internal images are different and need more care than the cover. So play around with your headshot, just like we did with the cover, and save it to a size you feel is good. Then open your ebook in the sigil, and we'll add these images in. Now that we have sigil open, let's first add our cover to the ebook. It's very simple. Just click on Tools at the top, then click Add Cover, then in the new window, click other files on the top right and then find the cover wherever you saved it and hit open on the bottom right. Now your cover is added just like that. For other images it's slightly different. First you'll want to find where exactly you'll be inserting the image. In this case my headshot is going to be in the about the author section so let's head there. Now, select the spot you want the image to be inserted. I like to have it before the text of About the Author. So I'll place my cursor here. Then, up at the top, click this button, Insert File. Now, just like with the cover, I need to click Other Images on the top right, then find the headshot I made, and then click Open and it will put the image in. With images inside the ebook itself, there's one additional step we'll want to take, and that's to make the image centered horizontally. Otherwise, it will just be off to the left side of the page, and that looks rather unprofessional if you ask me. We need to add in paragraph tags which will center the text, as it were. In this case, the text is the image but it will work the same. If you recall, we actually do have a paragraph tag that only has centered text in it, so we can reuse that one for this. Otherwise, if you've been playing around with the styles, you'll need to make a separate style just for the images to center text and use it instead. Once you have that ready, just add in a paragraph tag like so, then a closing tag on the other side of the image code, and we're done. Now the image is centered and looks a lot better. The next thing we'll have to do is fix the text, as right now there's a page break set up where the text about the author is, and we'll need to have it go before the picture instead. Otherwise, we'll have a page with just the picture, then a new page with our about the author text. If you're using a heading tag for the About the Author text, you'll need to make a new style for the same heading and leave out the page break, and then use that new style on the text. After that, you can use the previous style with the page break and just make a blank paragraph before the image like so. Now a page break will happen before the image and not after and we retain the heading for the About the Author so it stands out. The next step you'll want to take is updating the table of contents. If you'll recall in the tutorial from that, 
we need to regenerate the table of contents first. Go into Tools, hover over Table of Contents, and click Generate Table of Contents. In the new window, you'll notice that we have a blank section showing up, and another spot for the About the Author section. This blank section is actually where we just placed the page break before the headshot, and the other one is just the text portion of the About the Author section. So what we'll want to do is change the blank one to read About the Author, like so. And then we'll want to remove the other one, as if somebody clicks on the table of contents to go to the About the Author section, we want them to see the image as well, and not just the text. Now click OK at the bottom, then go back to Tools, hover over Table of Contents, and click Create HTML Table of Contents. Now the Table of Contents is fixed, and we have a functioning About the Author section with an image. As I stated earlier, play around with the size of the images, and after we've created the Kindle file, adjust them so that they look nice across multiple devices so that your readers have a great experience. All right, now you should be able to use GIMP effectively so that you can figure out which size works best for your images. In our next video, we'll be going over the final step in the process, actually creating the Kindle file. And you'll want to pay special attention to the deliverable file size and adjust the compression you use accordingly. That's all we have for today's video. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And remember, Second Drafts has everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.